Hi and hello, welcome back to our channel Vage Academy of Mathematics. So here this session is again from geometry and mensuration. So we are going to do what here in this session? If you see, yeah, it's over there. We are going to find a formula to get the area of a regular octagon. That's the objective of this session here. So yes, we go. And before that, if you see this area of regular octagon, if you are an aspirant who is preparing for exams like management exams like CAT, MAT, CMAT or any competitive exams like SSE, then definitely this derivation would be really helpful for you. Or in other way, if you are preparing for such exams, even if you feel that this formula is definitely not necessary for you, it's not needed for you, I will give an assurity that the way or the approach we are going to get to find the area to solve and get the formula to find the area of this regular octagon, the approach that would be definitely helpful for you. That's an assurity given here. So for that reason, I kindly request you to watch this session, this video till the end so that you would get a good information. That's why. Fine. Yes, we start with our thing. So yes, here we have a regular octagon and whose area is what we are going to find. And before that, what is a regular octagon? What is an octagon? First of all, an octagon is a polygon which is having eight sides. Such, an, such a polygon is what we call it as a octagon. And here, what makes it to be a regular octagon? If you ask, it's very simple for an octagon for all its eight sides, right? We have eight sides. So when all its eight sides are equal in length and also at the same time, if all of these eight interior angles that we see here are also equal, then we end up with a regular octagon. So here is a regular octagon and here we have taken the side, each side of this regular octagon to be A and here these interior angles are also definitely equal. For this octagon is what we are going to find the area. And next thing is we are going to take some approach to find the area. But before that, as we just discussed, I just told, now, told you now, right? All of these interior angles, I mean, each of these angles we see here, they are going to be equal. Let's try to find this interior angles first. Then we go find the area. Why? Because on the way of finding this area we may have to use this angles property that's the reason let's try to find the angle here itself then we go find the area yes fine okay yeah and one more thing let's take the figures elements here let's take the working area here and if any rough calculations or anything is needed let's use this place to work them fine yes so now let's try to find the interior angle of this regular octagon let's do with this so for any polygon, the sum of interior angles will be equal to, it will be equal to, we have a formula, right? So let me use this point space here. So sum of interior angles of any regular octagon will be equal to, for any regular polygon will be equal to 180 times of n minus two. So 180 degrees. So here this n stands for the number of sides. And now our polygon is nothing but an octagon. So for an octagon, the n value is eight, is it or not? So for an octagon, the sum of the interior angles will be equal to 180 times, what is n here? n is eight, so eight minus two will be six here. Yes, put it. But this 180 times six stands for sum of all these angles. I mean, sum of all these eight angles we see here. But if we need each of these angles, what has to be done? Just now we saw, we know that all these angles are equal and in that case if we know if we want to find each of these angles so each angle will be equal to it will be equal to this product 180 times 6 divided by 8 that's it because we know that there are 8 angles and all of them are equal and 180 times 6 is the sum and if I want each of these angles just divide this 180 into 6 this product by 8 so 180 times 6 by 8 so we can just simplify this 6 and 8 we can make it as 3 by 4 so we have 4 and 180 this will be 45 times and 45 times 3 will be equal to 135 is it or not so this will be 135 degrees 
and that means each of these angles we see here that means this angle this angle this angle whatever all these eight angles each of them are going to be exactly 135 degrees let's make a note of that angle is equal to 135 degrees yes our first part is successfully over now it's the time for us to get into the areas part for which let's try to make some kind of adjustment here or some kind of partition here we'll try to partition this octagon in a particular way such that it will be very easy for us to follow and then get the area fine yes yeah we go so i'm going to just going to split this octagon in a particular way let's have a close look how we are going to do that so just draw lines like this like this a line like this a line like this and then try to connect these two vertices a line like this and another line like this yeah this is really enough for us so now if you have a close look we have divided our octagon like this so that means can you just count and see how many regions are here or how many regions that we can see here inside this octagon so if you see that there are one two three four five six seven eight nine our octagon got split into nine regions inside so that means these nine regions sum is what our octagon's total area finished right yeah next is now again we'll have a close look we'll try to identify what are all the shapes we have inside this octagon right yes fine yeah so it's very obvious that the shape that we see here at the middle the innermost one is obviously going to be a square no doubt in that right so we have a clear square here yes and you may ask how it is a square it's very simple for us to understand and observe here see here just try to project these sides here these four sides here i mean the stop this left this right and this bottom just see all those four sides just get them projected inside so what happens is you will end up with this innermost shape which will be none other than a square is it or not so that means we have a square and again one more thing we can say very easily that the square will have side equal to a is it or not yes so we have one square that we can see inside and now next is let's see the corner portions here we have four triangles and another thing is let's have a look on these shapes we have four rectangles so that means it's very very clear that our area of this octagon is none other than sum of this innermost square so square plus sum of this four triangles this four triangles area also that has to be added right so four triangles that one plus and we have four rectangles here so four rectangles so when we just try to find this sum and when we are successful in finding this sum this value then our task is over we'll be obtaining the area of the octagon right yes so yeah the next thing is let's again have a close look about this triangles and this rectangles see now if you have a close look on these triangles and these rectangles since we have this octagon to be a regular octagon what happens is this triangles will also be congruent i mean all those four triangles will be same size and all those four rectangles will also be of the same size so that means just we can just take it, take it like square plus four times of any one of these rectangles area plus four times of any one of these rectangles area is the point clear so that way we can do we'll be able to get the answers so coming to the squares part it's very clear square we just realized that the side of the square is a and in that case area of that square will be equal to a square plus four times of area of any one of these rectangles plus four i mean this triangle and four times of area of any one of these rectangles okay right so now all we need is area of any one of these triangles so that we can place it here and area of any one of these rectangles if we find that that we can place it here and we simplify and get the answer is it or not yes so our next objective is going to be finding this area of these 
triangles and rectangles that's what it's going to be right okay so we have some empty space here let's try to use this space now in order to find the area of this triangle and also rectangle yes fine yes ready so for that reason what let me do is i will just redraw the same shapes here so i'll just draw a portion alone here so we have this corner having a rectangle i mean a triangle and we have a rectangle which is attached to it okay so we know that all four triangles are same shape they have the same shape and all four rectangles also have the same shape for that reason i'm just considering only one triangle and only one rectangle which are touching each other that's it okay i mean this piece and this piece the top two pieces is what i'm redrawing it here and we'll just try to observe the property to find their areas so that i can place it here to complete our derivation okay yes so here what we know is this this portion of our triangle is having its side to be a and this top portion of our rectangle i mean one length of the rectangle is again a fine yes and we also know that area of the triangle is equal to half into base into height and area of the rectangle is equal to length into breadth is it so if we know that we'll be able to get the answer but unfortunately our values are incomplete let's again try to see have a close look then complete those things so that we can get those areas fine yes and come back to our angles part here we have already found that each of these interior angles is equal to 135 is it or not let's try to use this information over here so that we'll just check whether it is helpful for us to complete what we are hanging with so yes and uh, what we can do here is yeah just take this one of these angles to be 135 so if i consider this angle to be equal to 135 fine all right so what happens is we clearly have this 135 this angle 135 that is seen here inside that interior angle is being shared by exactly one rectangle and one triangle is it or not and we surely know that inside a rectangle that corner angle will be always equal to 90 degrees it's always right angle right so in that case this corner angle will be definitely a right angle it will be a right angle so what we do is just do 135 minus that 90 so that we'll have the remaining portion which will be 135 minus 90 which is 45 that will lie here inside the triangle so that means we are now very sure with this angle to be equal to 45 degree now i can repeat the same experiment over here so this full angle will be again 135 where this will be shared with 90 and obviously the other part here what we see here will be another 45 degree i hope the point is clear to you so we have a right triangle here actually and another thing is since we have these sides to be intersecting here with the squares with the rectangle and we can very easily assure that this corner angle will be again equal to 90 degrees so that means the triangle what we see here is a right angle triangle and at the same time it is going to be an isosceles triangle because see here we have two of those angles to be equal in that case it's going to be a, an isosceles triangle is it or not yes fine okay now the next part is in an isosceles triangle there are two angles to be equal so it implies the two sides will also be equal is it or not so let's have the two sides these two sides to be the equal sides length to be some x and x fine is it or not so now our task is almost over see here we have this value to be x and this is to be x and now what happens is x x and a that completes right angle triangle and we all very well know pythagoras theorem so with the use of pythagoras theorem let's use or let's connect these three sides so that what happens is we'll be ending up with this x square plus this x square will be equal to our hypotenuse of a triangle which is nothing but a so a square so that we get 2x square is equal to a square and which gives x square is equal to a square by 2 and that gives x is equal to a by root 2 when we take square roots on both sides so we successfully got the value of x to be equal to a by root 2 so that's it and the other happy news is that this 
breadth of this re rectangle is again same as this height of this triangle is it or not so in that case this breadth of this rectangle is once again the same x value only and now we are very successful that we are having all the values all the required values that we are, that, that that are required to find the area of both the triangle as well as rectangle yes right so yes let's complete the process now the area of the triangle will be is equal to we know the area of a triangle's formula half into base into height so half into so our base and height are nothing but x and x only so in that case it will be a by root 2 times a by root 2 so this completes our value to be equal to 1 times a times a which is a square by come to the denominator we have 2 into root 2 into root 2 so root 2 into root 2 will give us 1 2 and 2 twos are will be a 4 so that means area of one triangle one of these triangle will be equal to a square by 4 so we can very well substitute this value over here so that we get a square by 4 here because 4 times of triangles area is what we have so 4 times of a square by 4 and next is come to the rectangle here so rectangles area is none other than length into breadth is it or not so our rectangles length is already available here it's nothing but a times our breadth is this x which we just found out so a by root 2 so that we will get rectangles area to be equal to a square by root 2 and now we can very well substitute this value also over here so that we'll be getting a square by root 2 success right so all we now need to do is just simplify this expression so that we'll be getting the area of the octagon so a square plus 4 times of a square by 4 which will be nothing but 4 and 4 they get out so we'll end up with a square plus here we have 4 times of a square by root 2 so this 4 by root 2 can be written as 2 root 2 is it or not so this is 2 root 2 a square you may ask how it works so if you want i can just show that explanation over here so somewhere over the top here because i have some empty region here so 4 by root 2 actually 4 by root 2 can be written as 4 root 2 by 2 is it or not why because i multiply root 2 and root 2 in both numerators and denominators so 4 root 2 it becomes a numerator and root 2 times root 2 will become 2 and now it's very easy for you to realize that this value is none other than 2 root 2 right yes fine so that means we have 2 a square plus 2 root 2 a square fine yes that's it and now all we need is we can just take the common factors outside so that we'll be having 2 a square as a common factor outside we can just remove it out so that all we'll be having inside is 1 here plus a root 2 here so that means area of a regular octagon whose side is a is given by the formula 2 a square times of 1 plus root 2 or 2 a square of root 2 plus 1 because addition is commutative so this is going to be our formula to find the area of a regular octagon i hope this derivation what we have done is very clear to you and if any doubts you are most welcome to comment it here in the comment box and again very soon in the next session let's catch up with some other interesting concept or problem very soon there thank you so much bye